Welcome to the other palace. <laughs> I've been here the whole week in the MT Fest, watching new musicals and nightcaps and teas for twos and everything. And it's been an amazing, amazing opportunity to watch new musical theater and to just be immersed in this um, amazing festival. Brilliant, organized by the one and only Mr. Paul Taylor Mills. <laughs> Let's see what he has to say about this. Hmm? Tell us a little bit more about what is MT Fest. Sure. So MT Fest is a celebration of new musicals and the people that make them. So uh, part of the festival is in four strands. The first part is the taster menu, and that's eight new musicals. And I use the word new in brackets. Uh, that can mean it's a commission whereby I put a team of writers round an idea or shows that have had a Broadway life before and they are here in a new way. Uh, they've been reduced or extended um, to shows that have been developed by the National Theatre before. And really, it's to try and... Um, the underlying message of the festival is to demystify uh, the process of making new musicals because there is no clear, straightforward trajectory in this country or anywhere. Um, sometimes it takes years, sometimes it happens very quickly. And I wanted a festival whereby audiences could kind of get a peep into shows um, at a point in their development and see what goes into the making of a new musical because it's quite complex. Uh, a famous artist and director once said that it's the hardest form of art to get right. And alongside the taster menu of shows, we do uh, something called Tea for Two which is an opportunity for me to speak to industry giants that work on new musicals to talk about how you market a new musical, how you cast a new musical, um, what you're looking for when essentially the actors or the creative team don't know what the, the project is. So essentially they're taking a walk into the dark and I thought it'd be really good for people to understand what goes through uh, an actor's mind when they say yes to a new musical. Uh, on top of that, we do something called Bean Brunches, which is really a celebration of British artists and songwriters. So that's happening on both Fridays throughout the festival, where we have over 12 different um, writers, and they come and do a kind of pitch, uh, an elevator pitch we call it, where they have 10 minutes to pitch their work, so they'll do a few songs. And then what's the final thing? The final thing, and this is my guilty pleasure, is our nightcaps. Uh, I'm so fortunate and lucky that I get to work with some incredible performers and I share amazing conversations with them that inform them as artists and the decisions that they make and the people that they work with and I thought to myself wouldn't it be brilliant if audiences had uh, a, an opportunity to see these wonderful people in an intimate setting and they happen nightly uh, at 9pm every night. The first week is now done. Yeah. And how do I look? <laughs> <laughs> look very good for someone that has been here for almost 24 hours a day. Um, how do you feel that it went? Oh, it's so brilliant. And, and you know what? The the most inspiring thing for me is that um, everybody is doing this because they believe in the, the generation of new musicals, and everyone is doing it out of goodwill for me. And it's such a, it feels like a weight, a, a huge responsibility on my shoulders but at the same time, so inspiring that I've got all these incredible actors and all these wonderful directors and musical directors and writers um, taking a punt on me. And it, it became very uh, clear very early on in the festival that it is a thing and there's such a buzz in the building. Uh, and to be honest, I'm just feeling really fortunate and lucky right now. And you feel at home here because... I feel at home yeah. here. This is, this is my base. I was the artist yeah. director here until July this year. And then I changed my position. I'm now uh, the affiliate producer here and advisory producer to Andrew Lloyd Webber. And what that's allowed me to do is essentially just go back to my independent work, which I enjoy so much. And I'm a firm believer that uh, the show that you're working on dictates the space that you do that show in. And therefore, sometimes I'm going to work on productions or shows that aren't suitable for the other palace. I'm about to do um, Ain't Misbehaving. And I've decided to do that at so that Playhouse, and I think the reason I wanted to do it there is it's much sassier and dirtier and sexier and the other palace is brilliant but it's quite clean 
and that's just not what I felt when I uh, first started listening to Amos Behaving and I wanted to do it somewhere a bit more industrial. Uh, so this, the space dictates where you then do a production. It's amazing. And how did you go about organising this? All uh, of this? Well, like I the... thought I could do it myself and it became very clear that you are not Superman and you can't do everything yourself. So I've got an incredible team of people around me that are responsible for the casting, the marketing, um, and I kind of just sprinkle fairy dust over the whole thing and I oversee it. Uh, but then someone else deals with the kind of coordination of it. Um, in terms of how I chose the pieces and how they came to me, it was uh, eight different ways. Some landed on my desk and got my attention, some I sought out, some I commissioned. Uh, and it goes back to what I was saying at the beginning, is there's no clear trajectory to how a new musical happens. The journey for all of them is different. Um, for me, the, the show has to speak to me in some way. Uh, what I mean by that is it has to um, move me. And that doesn't mean necessarily that I have to be an emotional wreck at the end of the musical. It could move me by making me giggle, uh, make me laugh, or it could be cathartic, or a range of different responses. But I think, does it speak to 2019? And how does it speak to the world we live in now? Uh, a whole host of different ways. Well, it's been amazing. I've been here three times already, oh, and well, I'm pretty support. sure it's not going to be the last one. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, thank you so much for organising and for talking to us. My pleasure. Thank you. And, thank you for um, support. Yeah. Anything else you'd like to come to MT Fest? It's <laughs> truly exciting. Um, we will only shape the way musicals are made uh, and new musicals are made if people support it. Uh, and I'm a big, big fighter for the development of new work. So come on down and I promise you won't be disappointed. And what is the website they can go to to get tickets oh, and Oh gosh, don't test me. The website is www.mtfestuk.co.uk Lovely. Thank, Thank you, you so much. I have also talked to a couple of other people that you may be interested in, so I'm going to cut them right now. But, so I was just uh, watching these guys on Nerds, <laughs> and it was amazing. Geek um, Conflict. Yeah, Geek um, So I'm sorry that you're scratching down. No, I am honestly, the shortest fine. person on Very Earth. Very little, tiny little person. <laughs> tiny, 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 sorry. Small, tiny person. Small, small. <laughs> um, so what was it like for you to be involved in this musical in its such early stages? of it as well. It was very, it's always exciting to be a part of new writing, um, but this is a spe especially special because it's, it, is a, it is a great musical and the music's amazing, the, the story is incredible, the script is really funny and it's, it's, <laughs> it's exciting to be a part of that and it's sort of like fresh sort of bubbly. bubbly skeleton form that it is. Yeah, we only had 12 hours to put it together and present to people, so it was a bit of a, a head mess up, swearing out. Um, <laughs> it's fine. So, yeah, so it was a bit intense to begin with, but now that we've done it twice, we feel a little bit more like comfortable yeah. to know where we stand. Um, yeah, but it's always really exciting to Shows. You're only going to do it like three times, right? Tomorrow's yeah. the last yes. day. Yeah, we'll do four, four times. Four four times. Tomorrow, oh, okay, so you have. But I think it will have a life after this. I, I think. Well. Hopefully, because it was really funny. Yeah. Like, people were genuinely laughing. Yeah. You know, because it's of silly. Yeah. It's, it's silly, and it's it's. And it's a subject matter that people know about, even if they don't think they do as well. True. So like, everyone knows about Apple. Everyone's got an iPhone. Everyone knows someone who's got an iPhone. Yeah. And everyone had to have Windows on the PC. <laughs> and they were at some point. At some point. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. That's amazing. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I will. I will let you um, go back to your drinks thank and to your talks. My water. <laughs> While that. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Hello. Hello. We're here with Sophie. We just finished her night cap. <laughs> it was amazing. Thank you. Um, yeah, I messaged her last night, just asking if we could do something, and she so very kindly said yes. Of course. Yeah. Um, so I was just wondering, what was your involvement with this? Because I know that you were in two of the musicals. Yes. You had your own night cap. So yeah. It's crazy. Oh, no. <laughs> um, so I am in Paul the Musical and I am in First Date. And um, both of which are very, well, Paul is very funny. Very, very funny. Um, and I play Sandy with a double D. <laughs> And um, in First Date, I play Casey, and she's on a first date, which is ironic because we open on Valentine's night. So that made me laugh. 
Um, and then tonight, Paul Taylor Mills. We didn't think it through, but it's my nightcap, but we start tech for the two musicals I'm in tomorrow morning. And you had rehearsals the whole and day. I had rehearsals. I've been singing since 10. It's now what? 10? Yeah. So, probably. yes, 10. My voice 10 is, is saying, go to bed. Um, but it was amazing. I had an absolute ball. It was so nice. I had been on Tasha's um, nightcap as well on Monday. And I just feel it's so good to be in a relaxed environment. Yeah. But the actor me was also thinking, you don't have a character to defend yourself. It's just you. Yeah. So what do you feel? I usually find that really hard. Like I find cabarets and gigs and that sort of stuff way more um, challenging and nerve wracking than learning a script and a song and being someone else. But I, d I don't know whether, because the other palace is such a wonderful, comfortable place. Some heathers and workshops here and just the whole feel of the building is so wonderful that I think it was like, oh, I'm coming home. Continuing. <laughs> <laughs> Slight interruption. I know. Um, um, so yeah, I also feel like You've spent a lot, a lot of time during the past few years in this place. It yeah. kind of like felt like home a little bit. Definitely, definitely does. I always have such a spring in my step when I know I'm coming here. Um, and I actually did my very first concert here for um, two writers, Mark uh, Petty and his writing partner, Barry Anderson and they did a like, cabaret of their work in the other studio when this was the St. James Theatre. Yeah. Then it changed over so it's always been a place that I've loved to work and been really lucky to do lots of work here. So yeah it was amazing and thank you so much for talking to me you a little welcome. bit. You are welcome. Thank you. Bye. Hey! Hi! Hi! Hello! Hi! Hi. We're here with Carrie in case you don't Hi. know who Hello. she is. So um, you are also in a couple of things around the MT Fest. Yes, you? I'm in, but I'm a cheerleader which starts on Saturday. We start rehearsing. That's amazing. Yeah. Have you had any rehearsals for it or is it one of those that nope. it's... It's literally Saturday, Sunday is our rehearsal and then I think Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is when we're performing. Oh my God. How do, you, how do you feel about that? I'm so excited because I think it's just... It's a... It's such a rare thing to get that short of a rehearsal period and then to put on a show. And it feels like everyone's just going to have to come together, muck in, and make it as good as just we possibly do can do in that amount of time. It's really exciting. Well, I saw Nerds yesterday. Oh and my god, was, I saw it tonight. It was so, so good. brilliant. It was so good. So brilliant. It's amazing how such a simple story can yes. just be so entertaining and enticing and yeah. just, it was amazing. So brilliant. So I know that it's already booked out, completely sold I know. out. I know. It's amazing. Crazy. So um, you can tell us a little bit of the story because we're probably not going to be able to see it anyway. So um... I mean, I've literally got the script about an hour ago, so I know nothing about it. Perfect. I'm literally going to watch the movie when I get home tonight, read the script tomorrow, and then rehearsals just begin on Saturday. Yeah. Amazing. That's just <laughs> so cool. <laughs> Um, and you've seen Scott as well, um, yes. And Dan a, and yeah. your Oliver. Yes, as I well. had a bunch of bunch of friends in that. Becky Lock as ben. well, and Jenny, who were both in in uh, Heather's. Oh my God! Yeah, yes. it was full. It was yeah, uh, chocolate box. So I had my friends. I had a bit of a situation getting here yesterday. Oh no! And I got stuck on the tube, oh. and then I had to rush. And when I went downstairs, they were already all no. at the door, and I was like, I'm so sorry. I'm not this person. Yeah. Literally, I'm so sorry. Um, they were all. It's, it's fine. It's all very relaxed. And then I got it. It's actually all very relaxed. Um, and I was watching Sophie's as well. Yes. And I was talking to her um, about being on stage with a character or without a character. And I know that you all, <laughs> yeah. you are like me. You feel more comfortable when you do have a character to lean yeah. on. I think it's such a common thing with actors. I think we all like to have something to hide behind. And then as soon as we're put on stage as ourselves, like the reason we're actors is because we would prefer to be someone else for a little well, while. Just a little bit. So as soon as you shove us on stage as ourselves, it's sort of like rabbit in headlights. Like, I, I don't have a script. I don't know what I'm supposed to say. <laughs> this is weird. Hi, this yeah. is me. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but, well, thank you so much. I'm oh, not going to take, you, no, you gonna take any more time. I'm glad you've been um, enjoying MT Fest. It's, it's amazing. It's really good. Um, so you, if you are lucky enough to have a Tickets, ticket, yeah. you will come and enjoy it. If not, there are, there are things happening at all times, yes. the whole day. Yeah, it's a so. chock-a-block schedule full of amazing things for yeah. MT Fest. Come and watch it. Thank you. Bye. Bye. 
So the Empty Fest is going to be on until the 23rd of February 2019. So you have plenty of time to grab your tickets and come along to the amazing Other Palace and watch brilliant new musical theatre and discussions and forums and workshops and everything. So come along, come along, come along, come along. <laughs> I hope to see you there. See ya. Taylor Mills. Oh, my and teeth look really white. I just noticed. That's great. <laughs> look at that. It's amazing. It's the light. <laughs> yeah, it's the light. It's all the light. <laughs> that was amazing. Is that going to be on your intro? Yeah. What? No, that is Wait. my intro oh, usually. Well, but... intro now. Yeah, well, why not? <laughs>